Okay. So in three, two. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Rod McMillian. I now call to order the, Feb the February 20th, 2024 meeting of the Audit Committee of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chairman of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's audit committee meeting has been held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by roll call vote. Board members will send their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. As a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Jamison or Ms. Barr if you must leave the call by using the team's chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll to determine the presence of the quorum of the committee. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Lichter. Ms. Lichter, are you present. there? Thank you. Yes, Ms. Frempong? Ms. Ms. Mr. Young? Present. Mr. McMillian. Present. Thank you. A quorum being present, we will begin. Ms. Jamison, please call the roll of staff members participating in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. I will start with Ms. Barr. Present. Ms. Stevens. Present. Ms. Mana. Present. Mr. Fletcher. Present. Mr. Strait. Here. Ms. Sample. Here. Ms. Crew. Present. Mr. Edwards. Present. Ms. Smith. Present. Mr. Hartlove. Ms. Webster. Present. Dr. Grimm. Present. Mr. Kahujan. Present. Ms. Kaur. Present. Are there any other attendees present that I did not recognize? No, hearing no additional names, I turn the meeting back to you, Mr. McMillian. Yeah, Ms. Jamison, I want to point out that Ms. Frempong is having computer issues, so she's attempting to get charged up and, and she'll join the meeting, hopefully. Okay? okay, thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. I've written a couple comments about the overpayment audit that I'm going to read to the listening public. The Fox News report about the overpayment audit came out last night. I want to point out to the listening public that the audit committee did a full presentation on the overpayment audit on Tuesday, October 17th, 2023 at 4.30 p.m. The complete audit was posted to the internal audit website the next day, October 18th, 2023. I encourage everyone who is interested in viewing the audit committee presentation to go to board docs and look up the October 17th, 2023 meeting, and you can watch it thoroughly. And I think we had, we talk about all phases of that. Uh, that's the end of that. Now we're going to move on. If committee members have questions that are outside the scope of the reports presented this afternoon, please email Ms. Barr or me with your questions. We will follow up with appropriate individuals to get the answers to your questions. Item number three, report. Ms. Jamison, please proceed with the MBE participation audit report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Good afternoon, board members, staff, and guests. Today, I am going to present the results of the audit of the Minority Business Enterpriser MBE program audit. I'd like to thank Ms. Webster, Director of Purchasing, for being here with us today. This report is posted on our website and on board docs if you would like to read it. The audit objective was to determine if BCPS complied with MBE procedures for state-funded construction projects. The MBE program has been in place in the state of Maryland since 1978. An MBE means that at least 51% of the business is owned by one or more individuals who are socially and or economically disadvantaged. Their current goal for MBE participation is 29%. Now that I've gone over some background, I'd like to get into some commendations from the audit report. There were no reportable issues noted in our audit report. We evaluated a random sample of state funded construction projects against the state MBE procedures and determined that BCPS complied with all of the procedures. BCPS has an effective monitoring practice in place for monitoring MBE participation for each state funded construction project. 
and BCPS has exceeded the 29% participation rate goal for the past 12 years, with the percent in 2023 being 34.89%. Finally, I'd like to thank Ms. Webster, who was very helpful during the audit process. She provided all the information we asked for promptly and um, was, was wonderful to work with. Now, if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, um, but I turn it back over to you, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Jamison, thank you very much. Committee members, any discussion on this item? Doesn't appear that we have any discussions. Ms. Sample, please proceed with the bus contractor's audit report. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, just one second, I'll join everyone. Okay. Thank you again. Good afternoon, committee members and staff. I am Sandy Sample, one of the senior auditors in the Office of Internal Audit. We completed the bus contractor management audit and issued the final report on February 6, 2024. The report can be found on board docs for this meeting and is posted to the internal audits website. Mr. Bradley Kahujan, Director of Transportation is here and will address management's corrective action action plan for the results identified in the, re in the audit. Also here is Mr. Keith Fletcher, one of the audit managers for the Office of Internal Audit who reviewed the work completed for this audit. So um, transportation operates approximately 785 bus routes each school day and bus contractors support BCPS in providing transportation services. Currently, BCPS has 10 approved bus contractors to help provide school bus route services. The audit objective was to determine if transportation ensures that school bus contractors are competitively selected, that contractors comply with state requirements for their drivers, and that contractors operate safe vehicles. We reviewed the 2023 calendar year for this audit. And with this audit, there were two issues or results that we will discuss. Um, we identified two issues, but there were several areas we reviewed that had no exceptions. And those are in the accommodation section. The first relates to communication. We appreciate everyone we work with in transportation for their cooperation. We wanted to ensure that bus contractors use for school bus routes were competitively selected and there are no exceptions there. Uh, we reviewed buses that were being used by the schools and determined that they were not using unapproved bus companies. Contractor bus drivers met the pre-employment drug test and CDL requirements. Transportation conducted random alcohol and drug tests for contractor bus drivers. Contractor bus drivers attended in-service trainings. There were no exceptions there. We found that transportation was appropriately acting on notifications received from the Maryland Motor Vehicle Administration. Transportation complied with accident reporting requirements identified by Comar. We saw that transportation um, was inventorying <laughs> contractor bus inventories. And so they were tracking that. And we learned that contractor vehicles were being inspected as required. So there were a lot of areas we reviewed that had no issues or findings. Now, there were two issues that are noted in the report. The first issue is regarding the criminal history records check or the fingerprinting. We identified seven contractor bus drivers who were not fingerprinted by BCPS, which meant that the results of their background checks were not provided directly to BCPS. The results were sent directly to the bus contractor or directly to the bus driver. Now, we learned that those drivers were hired over 20 years ago prior to BCPS's fingerprinting requirements for contractors. 
The contractor bus drivers were fingerprinted and the results were handled in accordance with the requirements at that time. Since 2015 though, fingerprinting results need to be provided directly to BCPS. Our recommendation here is to ensure that all contractor bus drivers are fingerprinted and results are provided directly to BCPS. I will turn it over to Mr. Kahujan for management's corrective action. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so management's corrective action. So at the time, as mentioned, the identified seven contractor bus drivers were certified and the Department of Transportation followed the established protocol, which required the contractor bus company to provide copies of the federal and Maryland state criminal history reports. As identified above, all seven contractor bus drivers had the required criminal history documentation. The Department of Transportation is conducting an audit of all certified contractor bus drivers hired prior to July 2015 to verify if there are any additional contractor bus drivers who have not been fingerprinted by BCPS. Meetings will be held with each contractor company to review the findings, discuss the remedy, and ensure compliance. Thank you, Mr. Kahujan. The second result is regarding SOPs or standard operating procedures. Um, SOPs related to contractor bus companies were not yet finalized. So our recommendation is that transportation review and complete written processes, including those processes that relate to contractor bus companies. I will turn it back over to you, Mr. Kahujan, for management's corrective action. Thank you. Management's corrective action for standard operating procedures is to finalize draft standard operating procedures for contractor bus driver certification and establish priority timeline for all drivers and attendant certification SOPs. Thank you. Well, um, that's the end of the, of the report. I'd like to thank Mr. Kahujan, Ms. Kimberly Kerr, and Mr. Michael Groff for their cooperation during this audit. Um, Mr. McMillian, I will turn it back over to you for any questions. Great, thank you very much for the presentation. Thanks for the responses. Committee members, any questions about this presentation? I see something in the chat. Let me see. OK, no, that's not about this. OK, no questions. OK, so that's it. Uh, we're going to move on to item number four. I don't see any questions, so we're going to go on. Item number four, announcements. The next meeting of the Audit Committee will be on Tuesday, March 12th, 2024 at 4.30 p.m. And I want to point out to the listening public that when Ms. Barr and I constructed the agenda for this meeting, which was last week, uh, there was an issue that we were concerned about maintaining a quorum at our meeting. So we deliberately uh, limited the number of topics on this agenda because one of our board members or one of our committee members has to leave. So we were concerned that we wouldn't have enough and we didn't want that to happen and have to stop the meeting at that point in time. So we deliberately constructed the agenda so that uh, it would be a short program. So that's the rationale behind it. I want to thank everybody for attending. Thank you very much. And that is the end of our meeting. Thank you. Any comments from anybody? Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr.